Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 14, Episode 2, All Aboard the Gaslight Express. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump right on into it. So we start off with Sonia, and we can learn a bit more about her, like, uh, her family situation. So she and her husband Ross were originally in Austin, and um, they recently relocated to Atlanta, and Sonia basically moved her whole family along with her. So it's her, her husband, and her son, both of her parents, her sister, her sister's husband, and their two children. So there are nine total people in the home, and Sonia said they're planning on living together for the first year or so. Kind of giving uh, Sonia's family a chance to like settle into Atlanta, kind of like look around for like their own places to get, you know what I mean? So they're not living together forever, but for like about a year or so. And at first it's like, it seems really cool. She tells us about how like um, her mom is still her manager and her sister is her hairstylist. And they basically are like, an, it's a nice support system. You know, there's all these people there. Um, you know, the cousins so always be around, like, three boys, so you know, they're um they have the, i'm sure it's fun for them um but we quickly learned that's a bit much for specifically sonia her sister and her mother so they're all in the kitchen and it's good vibes at first and then um sonia's mom goes to make a beef patty basically like like a pastry filled with like beef from uh, she brought from jamaica and um all we got is like oh mom can you make me a beef patty like you um I barely only had, I had like one beef patty and there are like two boxes gone down. So it's this big old situation. The mom's like, I'm heating up a beef patty for my husband. Like, she's kind of like, it, it pisses the mom off. And she's kind of like, oh my gosh, there shouldn't be any conversation around the patties, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I won't be told what to do. I won't be able to do whatever I want. So you see, it's getting a bit much. The sister mentions that she misses having, um, Basically, she misses having her own space and her own house, in a way. She misses, like, having her own area, because it's a bit overwhelming. I'm sure the home that they have is really large. We haven't seen too much of it yet. But I'm sure it's large and accommodating for all nine people. But, you know, there's still nine people, you know? So it's it's a bit much. But, you know, whatever. Good for Sonia. Um, then we segue over, and we see Chateau Charest. And it's really cool because we've seen it from the beginning when it was just fucking dirt, a dirt lot. And then we see the finished product and it's really fabulous. It looks great. And it was so funny. So it shows off like the whole chateau. And then um, it shows charade, then switches a charade in the kitchen. And her mom, Thelma, walks in. She's like, hey. <laughs> and it's funny because um, I think it was a while back, someone brought up about how like, oh, it's, it should be called Chateau Thelma because allegedly... Someone brought up how, like, allegedly Thelma, Sheree's mother, had to, like, put the house in her name because Sheree's credit was shot. Some, something like that, which I don't even know. I, I know nothing. That was back in the early days when I was, I was like, a babe when that shit aired. So I saw it, but I don't really know much of the details or anything. Um, but it was just funny that, like, she was, like, the first person. <laughs> um, like, Chateau Sheree and Thelma. <laughs> but, so it looks good. Um, we found that um, Sheree's prepping for Kenya to come over, and she's gonna show off, show off the house, um, and so Kenya arrives, they greet and everything, and Sheree's like, oh, let's check out the basement, and Kenya brings up how, oh, I've never been down there, well, I've been down there once, and I get a flashback to when, um, Sheree had her housewarming party back when Sheree and Kenya were, like, having a house battle, Chateau Sheree versus Moore Manor, and Kenya was like, let's check out her basement. Oh my God, she said that bitch lied. She said she was more done than mine. You know, I've never been out. Well, I've been out here one time. I know. Kenya has not been in my basement since the bitch went creeping during my housewarming. Is this the basement? Oh my God, she said her house was more finished than mine. I finished it. I cannot. So that was good, but it's good to see how far Sheree and Kenya have come, definitely. Um, they have hanging out down there in the basement. It's beautiful. They have like, um, there's a big bar area, an entertainment section, a little massage parlor area. It's really great. And actually, side note, people on Twitter are bringing up how, um, they're like, people are always talking about how Marlo gets her money. But bitch, how did Sheree get the money to finish this damn house? Because she was already, I'm assuming that her stuff with Bob Whitfield got settled because 
she was still building her house when she finalized her divorce from Bob Whitfield, meaning when she got her, like, her hat, her cut of his stuff. So they were like, well, what is Sheree up to? And you know how the fan base is. Whenever someone questions, where did they get the money for this? It's always either A, are they like, you know, um, tax fraud, all that bullshit. Or are they, you know, hoeing? And it's like, you know what? Good for Sheree if, he's, if, she's, if she's doing the latter. You know, I hope she's not doing tax shit because that don't catch up. But, you know, who cares? Whatever. But I'm just bringing it up that people on Twitter were just like, how the hell did she get the money for this? We're looking at Marlo, but we should be looking at Sheree. And then while um, Kenya and Sheree are sitting down, they proceed to talk about um, Marlo's La Archive event and about how, like, it just popped off. Um, and Sheree actually proceeds to tell Kenya a little bit about what Marlo is saying about her. She brings up about how Marlo was capping on Kenya for having a white refrigerator, like, back in it when she first, like, started the show. About how she was allegedly, like, borrowing or like renting out Lisa Ray's Range Rover and Kenya's like oh my gosh like what and then Sheree calls mini Sheree aka Sonia the mini bone carrier she's like hey Sonia can you tell Kenya what Marlo said and Sonia basically confirms she's like something about a white refrigerator and a and a rented Range Rover and Kenya's like oh my gosh Marlo's just tripping and she was like well who cares about oh, what's wrong with a white refrigerator at least I can pay my bills and Kenya brings up about how Marlo is basically popping off on everyone. She's like, she even came for little poor Drew's bun the other night. And Kenya proceeds to read Marlo down about how she says, um, oh, I don't know why Marlo's talking about someone's bun when she had actual Bosley hair implants. It's a Chia pet surgery. She dragged poor Drew over her little bun last night. Coming from a girl who just had actual Bosley hair implants, you're talking about a girl <laughs> with, bun, with a bun. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's a Chia pet surgery. That's what it is. Isn't it the purpose of getting the hair transplant for your edges? Not to wear the lace front? Just go buy you a Chia pet and put the seeds on your scalp, put a little water on a little grease, a little oil. Girl, get your edges back. That's all you gotta do. Get your edges back. <laughs> then after that's done, we find out that Drew found out that she and Sheree share an assistant. That one annoying assistant, Anthony, um, I, I don't know, he kind of annoys me because they're, they're like working out and he was like, is all this sweat good for your skin? And it's like, shut up. <laughs> but anyway, Drew found out they shared an assistant and Drew told Candy that, oh, um, he's kind of telling me stuff that Sheree, he's telling me stuff about Sheree, he's telling me Sheree's personal business that he's finding out as her assistant. And Candy's like, ooh, you gotta tell Sheree. And Drew says, yeah, I'll, I'm planning on telling Sheree. Okay, done. Then Candy told Kenya, she like basically shared news with her, and now Kenya is telling Sheree before Drew got the chance to. So Sheree is kind of like, I know who you're talking about, but I like hardly ever use him. Like he's, he's kind of like a, almost a freelance assistant it sounds, you know what I mean? Like someone just kind of come in when you need him. Um... And then Sheree basically says, I'll be sure to talk to her about it. And she's like, and by the way, I kind of, I think Drew should be more worried about what's going on at home between her and Ralph than my business. And it's like, ooh. <laughs> so I say we're with Drew and she and Ralph are at the dinner table. They're with the kids early, but the kids like finished eating and now it's just her and Ralph. And Drew tells Ralph about what Candy showed her in the last episode about how um, allegedly the, the assistant who... Ralph allegedly fired. She made like an Instagram post that seemed to be talking shit about Drew. So Drew was like, oh, well, are you still, what's up with your assistant? And Ralph says, look, I fired her. And Drew says, okay, so you don't talk to her anymore? And Ralph, he's like, I never said I don't talk to her anymore. I said I fired her. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I mean, at least he was not, whatever. And she's like, oh, well, he's like, yeah, we, we still talk, you know, we're still going to do business, but I fired her. And he, it's this weird, this whole weird thing. And Drew goes into how, and, um, how Ralph basically puts her on tumble dry and tries to confuse her, basically, when she confronts him. And then we see Ralph continue to be like, she's 50 years old. She, I was born when she was 12 years old. Um, blah, blah, blah. Please tell Drew that she's, basically suggests that she's kind of insecure and that she needs to get past his him working with women, essentially. 
and um, we get a Drew, we get to Drew's confessional, and she says something about how people say that Ralph gaslights me, but I don't think that's true. And the producer goes, can you define gaslighting, please? <laughs> and she takes her phone out, like Miriam Webster's in it, and she's like, oh, um, she reads the definition of gaslighting and like the, emo the emotional ma manipulation into questioning someone's own sanity. And Drew's like, oh my gosh. And shady ass production proceeds to play this. You left the other day, and I still don't know where you were. We don't really truly understand men and how we work, especially black men. What was so the reply? The reply was, look, you know, I was like, hey, my back is really hurting. And she was like, man, like, you should have gotten that massage or whatever like that. I was like, hey, no, you no, know no. what? No, no, no. What did she say? I had to look. So, leave. yeah, like, we already know from Jump that production's having fun with Jordan Ralph this season. But it's also, like, it's almost too, as we'll see later on, I'll say that for later, but it's almost, like, Ralph's stuff is almost, like, too textbook. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what the hell? You know, and it's been like this since the beginning. It's only our second season. But it's like this, and it's, it's so weird. It's like, Drew, Ralph, I don't know. They're a mess. Um, and then we get some quick scenes with, um, Marlo, Kenya, and Sheree, basically, and, and their mama slash Monty duties. Um, Marlo, she's getting um, Michael's stuff ready for homecoming, basically like styling him, deciding what like what goes with what, and um, uh, finding out like what homecoming is. Basically, she's like it's baby prom, right? And then we see Kenya and Brooklyn. They're having a little tea party, and it's so cute. And then we see Sheree, and my Sheree's kids are like a lot older. Uh, we've never really seen much of Sheree's oldest child. Um, her, she's like thirty six now. I'm probably 37 now, but as a film, she's 36. Um, and then Sheree's two younger kids, we saw some a little bit of them while, like, you know, because they were living with Sheree while she joined the show. I think her son's around my age, like 24, 25, and her daughter's a little bit younger. But her oldest kid's, like, 36. And Sheree's talking, it's Sheree, her mom, Thelma, and her daughter, uh, Tiara. And they're on the kitchen, and Sheree's like, how's your podcast going? And Tiara's like, oh, like... And I told you I have to listen, because, you know, we're talking about, like, um, polygamy, one-night stands, my favorite sex positions, and Thalma's like, well, I will not be listening. <laughs> so it's really cool to see them all in their little element, you know, in, in mommy duty. Um, they're such a really candy. And we get, as we know, Candy's always busy. She's all about her business. So she's currently, we found that about her um, Broadway play. She's putting on, um, I think she's producing a Broadway play, and it's called um, uh, Thoughts of a Colored Man. It's an all-black cast. It's Broadway's first all-black cast, actually. So Candy's super hype about it. She was talking a bit about it. Um, but she shares that she's going to be, she's super busy with it, because she's basically traveling all up and down the eastern seaboard, uh, heading over to New York every so often to produce the fucking play. Um, and she tells Todd that... Um, she needs him to basically step it up a bit more. She can't do it on her own. And Todd's like, what do you mean you can't do it on your own? When are you on your own? Like, and Candy tells him, well, you know, I mean, you can't be just going on, you go on vacation multiple times a year. You can't be doing that. Like, it disrupts the flow. And Todd hits her back with, well, you leave for months at a time for, like, you don't think that disrupts the flow? And Candy's like, I leave for work. I leave to do shit, to get, to bring money in for our family. What are you, what are you going to do um, down in Miami when you go on vacation? Todd. Hang out? You cannot tell me that Todd is not fucking at least one bitch. You cannot tell me he is not, like, getting some, something when he's out in the, I don't know. But anyway, um, Candy shares that Todd, it seems that Todd's kind of struggling with this Broadway thing specifically. Because all their other, their other projects are, like, involve Todd. You know, he's involved in the, the, Candy coated night stuff and the the restaurants obviously, but the Broadway thing is just candy. It's not Todd, and so she feels like he's kind of struggling with it. And it's just, God, it, it's like I, I just really want Todd to do better. You know, I used to have like a lot of sympathy for him, especially when like the Mama Joyce shit about him really being shat on. But I don't know. I can't defend that. You know, um, and they're kind of butt heads, and we find out, um. So there's this one room in their house. It's their indoor pool room. And Todd basically ruined it. So it showed up before and after. And so basically before it was 
like a traditional fucking pool, you know, it was just like the, 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 the tan stone around little waterfall, like a traditional, you know, if, if you're in Southern California or Florida, you've seen like a million of them. Um, and Todd's like, so I made it current, you know, I put the black marble in, made it more, more contemporary. And I'm almost like that, I feel like that makes it look older. That black marble, if it looks very like almost like 70s, like Playboy Mansion kind of, you know what I mean? And it's like, ooh, I like the better how it was. Well, all right. I've changed this whole pool. Check the floors out. It's the black marble look. It's looking current. You know, before it was, you know, that tan, that old school. But, you know, things have kind of slowed down right now. <laughs> but anyway, it's not done. So it's like. There's this black marble pool and shit like that, but it's full of, like, uh, pool furniture and, like, like, outdoor furniture and, like, pool shit and boxes. And it's just, like... And Todd basically almost tries to blame on Candy. He's like, yeah, you know, Candy's so busy that it's hard for us to kind of sit down and agree on what what humidity equipment furniture to bring in. And it's like, Todd, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, ugh. And then we learned about Todd's New Jersey condo. So, essentially, um... Todd and his, like, ex-girlfriend or ex-fiance, one of the, one of the two, they, like, got this condo over in New Jersey, like, years ago. And essentially, um, she stayed in there and never refinanced after they broke up, and he had to buy her out. And so he has a condo in Jersey. And it's kind of pressing candy. She's like, my name's on that condo, and blah, blah, blah. And she doesn't really want, to, want any part of it. Um, and can't, because it was something that he had with his ex. And Todd, he's like, well, I mean, I didn't say anything when, you know, I moved into our old house that you had before. It's just dumb, to be honest. He wants to share it with me, but if this was your spot with your ex, I don't really want to do nothing. The house she had when we met, she had already bumped and grinded all kind of craziness in that house. She didn't even flip the mattress over. Um, then we see a scene with Marlo and Candy. So essentially, Marlo's linking up with Candy while Candy's doing like this, um, it's like a Halloween photo shoot. Uh, so she's dressed like a witch, has like a prosthetic nose and everything. Um, they link up and they basically just sit to talk for a little bit. Um, Marlo again brings up about how she feels like she may be like spoiling the boys rotten, essentially like creating little monsters, she says. And Candy brings up about how, um, but he point that Brooke a the Brooke Ashley brought up, I believe, like, last week, about how, you know, what does, um, what does being black have to equate to struggle? Like, you know, we don't say anything about, you know, these rich white kids who have these Mercedes, so why are we tripping about, um, going all out for our kids just because they're black? And so it's a good point. I really read, um, Marlo kind of seemed to take it in, and she's like, you know, you're right. Um, and then it, it's a good moment that quickly passes over and Marlo talks about how, um, she tells Candy, oh, you're really the only one who sent like a, a, a birthday cash app, you know, sent stuff, but I really like more hands-on stuff because it takes a village. And so Marlo's basically telling Candy they should like to hang out more with, like with the kids and stuff. It's kind of weird because Candy has, Riley's like old, she's like 20, I believe. So he's older than the twins. And then Candy's other, not, not they're not twins, but they're like, one's 14, one's 12. They're Marlo's nephews, I mean. And then Candy's other um, two kids, they are like babies. You know, Ace is probably like five and um, Blaze is probably like two. So it's like, they, they don't, they're not of like similar age groups or anything like that. Um, but, and, but Candy doesn't like to bring, up, bring that up, but Candy does say, well, you have to be the kind of friend that you want. You never invite me to anything. You never, you know, like, it seems like, can't be the thing that seems like it's out of the blue. Because Marlo's like, oh, let's hang out a bit more. And he's like, well, you never invite me to hang out. Um, so that's that. And then Marlo, um, she's like, oh, we can hang out whenever. And Kay's like, like when? And I was like, tonight. Come over tonight and hang out with me and the boys. Hey, right, come tonight and hang out with me and the boys. So it's just kind of awkward a little bit, but you can see Marlo's really trying to like, um, she's trying for the sake of the boys. You know, damn well she wouldn't really be seeing Candy asking, begging to hang out if it weren't for the betterment of the kids. You know, she wants to give them a village. But as we see later, Marlo kind of does have a village for the boys because Marlo has like a, a husband and wife assistant team 
that are like really involved. Like they're they're both her Marla's assistants and they're also a married couple. Um, so they're really involved with like the boys and stuff like that. So Marlo kind of does have a village ish, but I guess she wants to expand it, if you will. Which you know I get, but I think I think it's Marla's approach to it. She's just kind of dropping it on Candy like, why don't you hang out with me? Come hang with me and the boys. <laughs> but you know. Good for her. She's trying. Um, then we see a quick scene where Ralph is basically telling Drew that he's gonna, um, they're gonna do stuff to get back to normal together. And that he's gonna go all out. And we, it's basically foreshadowing for later on. Drew's saying he's gonna do something to get back to where they were. Um, and then we see this weird scene, like a scene with the husbands linking up. So, and it's by husbands, I mean just uh, Ralph, Todd, and Ross. And they meet up, and we see, we see Bravo trying to test this whole, like, husband scene thing with other shows. It was just with New Jersey for a while. Like, New Jersey husbands have multiple solo scenes. They're on multiple, they're on the majority of cast trips, I believe, at this point. Um, they tested out on Salt Lake City earlier. They had the husbands link up on that show. It was really weird. And it's kind of weird here, too, because we don't really see that on Atlanta very often. Um... We'll see husbands at like group functions, but we don't see husbands sans wife. You know what I mean? So it's kind of weird. We basically link up and they're clowning on Ralph over the assistant drama. And again, we see some more shady editing, seeing basically just making Ralph look stupid. It's hard to explain. It's a matter of you believing exactly what I say. It was more like, I should have just did it myself, but I'm going to do it. For, I'm, and I am going to do it for you. What she did, and I said, I'm a guy. You know, I didn't do it. It's the same thing as with guys taking medicine. We don't do it sometimes. He puts me on tumble drive. But really, Drew should never have been going through my cell phone to begin with. Um, and again, now we see Marlo's little mini village. Um, it's Marlo, the boys, and the assistants, Ty and Justin. And they're basically like uncle and aunt figures. Um, and it's cute. So we see a bit of more of Marlo's house. And I see that Marlo has like little calendars on the fridge, like little like magnet calendars. And like each boy has their own and it's really cute. Um, and Marlo, she tries teaching Michael how to dance for homecoming and she touches on how she grew up. She grew up like in the projects and her mom was doing drugs. She was like uh, physically abused and she was in, she went to foster care eventually. She checks out how she went to like this one prom and she like, it was so fun. She, you know, felt like this shit. She, and she wants to give the boys those memories plus and then some, you know? So she's like, I didn't have people waiting down the stairs for me to come down and take photos of me and no one got me a driver, and it was, you know, so we really see Marlo going all out. It's a really, really cute scene. You know, really, really, we really see her, you know, thank God, you know, for Marlo, you know, because it's, they're at a really formative age, you know, they're like 11 and 14, been with her for like three years, and it's like, you know, good for Marlo, you know, she, she swooped in, saved the day, and we get to see this side of her, because for so long, Marlo was just like that hard-ass, friend who came and dragged the fuck out of you and talked shit like crazy. Now we see a softer side to her and it's really refreshing. All right, so now we got the surprise date night between Drew and Ralph. Um, so essentially Ralph gave Drew like a day of like a princess. You know, he brought her, like, he bought her all these flowers, um, have sense of the house. Um, he had like these, like a stylist and like, uh, all, all these people sent to the house to get Drew ready for this date, the surprise date. And Ralph got Drew, had Drew wear this hideous, ugly ass dress. Come on, Drew. <laughs> it literally, it looked like a figure skating outfit. Like it, it like it was just like this tiny yellow dress with like these this these like beads everywhere. It looked like something you see maybe on Dancing with the Stars for like this one like niche really weird performance. But it was it was one of kind of those things, a Dancing with the Stars figure skating like like a, a costume almost like i <laughs> like that one reporter who um who did they ask i don't remember who it was uh i think it was hippity haddish they were like oh well, you look great in your costume like costume but whatever um that's what it looked like it was an ugly dress but drew was so happy she felt like a princess she had a little fairy like a little fairy wand that came with it um a driver pulls up and he takes Drew to Ralph's tailor. It's Ralph's tailor's showroom. And Drew's like, I don't know why we're here, but you know, whatever. Mm. 
Where am I? So this is my tailor showroom, actually. Oh, okay. We are here. This is the place that you come who does the suit? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't understand why, but I'm here. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? oh my God. This is all... And they go up to the rooftop and have this beautiful dinner date, all these roses and, um, and yeah, Ru um, Ralph says that he wants to make Drew feel like she's a queen again. Um, and he wants to just enjoy, really enjoy the moment together. Drew is very happy. She's kind of blown away and she's just super happy with Ralph. But she does say that she wants to work on their communication. Um, and this kind of puts, um, puts a pin in Ralph's bubble. You know, he's kind of like, oh, it's Pop's, Pop's bubble. And he's like, okay, I agree. You know, we have to work on our problems. And, and that's why I want to touch on, um, you know, why I feel like we can have unrealistic expectations of each other. And so that's why I'm personally changing my order of things. So Ralph says that basically at first, before his order was God, his wife, their kid, and then Ralph. Now he says, now it's God, me, my wife, the kids, and blah, blah, blah. And Drew's like, so you think you had it in that order before? Like, you know, you think you prioritized me before? He's like, oh, I'm sure I did come a provider. And Drew's kind of like, you see it, she's really not feeling that. She's like, well, I'm constantly having to walk on eggshells because you're just always so damn angry all the time, blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah, it's just kind of really weird. Um, we see there's a lot of tension. Someone comes out and brings, like, the main course, and Drew's like, oh, excuse me, um, Ralph says that he'd rather save the drama for marriage counseling, and he kind of switches to playing the victim. He's like, oh, um, if you don't appreciate this, you know, it's fine, you know, um, blah, 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 and Drew's like, no, I do appreciate it, because this shows me that our marriage could work, and then Ralph's like, this shows you? All the other stuff I do for you, that doesn't show you? Like, he switches to the victim once he sees that he's, like, he doesn't have the the upper hand anymore, basically, in the argument, essentially. Um, you're also playing the victim again. He tells Drew, I'm going to make an appointment with Dr. Ken, who's, like, their marriage counselor, and tell you how to um, tell, how to speak to men appropriately to get your, your point across. And then Drew's like, well, I'll make an appointment for you to speak to women. And she's like, ha-ha. And Ralph says, oh, Dr. Ken says you have to throw zingers. And this he's just this fucking marriage counselor. I don't even know. We've never met him before. And then Drew's like, well, uh, if you're talking about what Dr. Ken said, he said you're a maniac. And this pisses Drew off. Um, this pisses Ralph off. He's like, oh, why would you? Like, he's just being dramatic with his words, but you're trying to use it the wrong way, blah, blah, blah. And it just goes left so quickly. And again, it's, a case of what we see it's we know it's like love bombing he's just trying to like get the prop like oh make you feel like a queen so you forget about the issues and you being a douchebag and but again it's like too textbook almost it's like oh, i don't know it's it's kind of weird and, and i don't even know what to say really because it's like when the other when there's like john Teen and housewife stuff there's usually like a reason you know even if it's not a good one it's like oh um, the man's feeling emasculated because, you know, the wife is, you know, coming up or whatever, or, oh, there was infidelity or there's communication. And, but this, it's just Ralph being a douchebag. Like, I don't know what to, <laughs> Ralph's just being an asshole. And that's basically how it ends. Ralph gets up from the table. He proceeds to say that, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this for you. But he basically says that Drew isn't worthy of these things that he's, um, he going, him going all out, and it's this really weird, cold moment, and it's, yeah, that's how it ends, and this last scene was, it really took the life out of me, it was just like, ugh, it was just such a, ne it was, I don't know, such a bad, emotionally manipulative situation, but, yeah, that's what, that's what Drew's being to the table, you know, that this is her, uh, part of her storyline, so, but I'm not sure what to, how to digest it. You know what I'm saying? But that's it for this episode. Uh, again, sure, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.